1971, scientists proved what farmers had suspected for years, that possums were a major source of bovine tuberculosis infection in farmed cattle and deer. As a result, the then Department of Agriculture embarked on an extensive program of possum control. By the late 1970s, bovine tuberculosis was in remission across most of New Zealand. The success was to be short-lived. In 1978, government funding for possum control was virtually stopped. There was no money being able to spend for doing any um, basic control in those areas that had a bad TB problem. And then, of course, they stopped the compensation. They stopped, and stopped doing 1080 and all this, and the whole country got, and, and so did we. 1994 was when the number of infected herds peaked. So in 1987, 80 through to 1989, they were just going up and up. Every, every month, infected herd nationally were increasing. The cattle look healthy, but because they graze right beside a forest, they're prime targets for getting TB from possums. Possum numbers have soared since the 70s. They're ruining the trees, and they've spread TB over a huge area. A quarter of New Zealand is now covered with them and their disease. I'm estimated it's cost New Zealand a billion. A billion dollars uh, easily from that mistake of letting the head. Because we, we, we were down to about th three herds here in the Buller, about 82 it was, and it just got right away. Things were made even worse by the lack of a coordinated approach to the crisis. National TB control policy and decision making had been largely delegated to an industry-led advisory committee. Possum control, such as it was, was mostly left to a loose network of locally funded pest destruction boards. I came here in 1990 and, you know, it was real chaos, you might say. By 1994, the number of cattle and deer herds in New Zealand infected with bovine tuberculosis had reached over 1,700. With a far higher herd infection rate than most other developed countries, New Zealand's access to high-valued overseas markets was seriously at risk. Rural communities throughout the country struggled to cope with the emotional and financial strain. I had a naive appreciation of just, you know, what a risk it was, really. You know, it knocks people around, and, and I believe there may have even been one or two who, who you know, it's taken them to the, the ultimate end. Um, just because of the pressures, the financial pressures that was put on them. As New Zealand's cattle and deer herd infection rates were increasing rapidly in the 1980s, farmers were reaching an agreement with central government to work together on a program to tackle TB at a national level. With a membership drawn from federated farmers, dairy, beef and deer industry groups and local government, the fledgling Animal Health Board and its TB control program began to turn the corner in the fight against the disease in New Zealand. We were trying to set up um, programs for those farmers to do their own control and we try to subsidise it, their, their control effort. And when we then reviewed that, what clearly showed up was the only thing difference was these guys wanted possum control. Doing, they couldn't achieve doing their own control what we were achieving by having a formalised control program. On the South Island's west coast, the local pest destruction board used to have 30 workers killing possums. Now there are two. Funding of pest control used to come from central government. By next year, farmers will have to provide two-thirds, and they're worried that possum numbers are getting out of control. Yeah, there's been quite a, a, a concern in most of the areas on the coast, particularly the TV endemic areas, of the increased numbers of possums over the last few years. And it's showing up also with the increased numbers of herds on movement control. And to keep it under control, you, you have to keep on it. You just can't afford to let it go. No, you can't, you can't turn your back on it. But that seems to be what's happening, is it? In lots of cases, particularly a year like this, yeah. it's beyond most farmers' ability to do very much about the possum, control, uh, possum numbers uh, on a year like this, you know, wet, wet season. Well, what were the tactics or what was the recipe that you needed to put in place to actually get on top of the problem? And, that, and basically there was, a, so there was a major increase in the science and research program looking at those questions, starting in about the, um, the early 1990s here. One of the critical times was probably about 1998 when we, changed, when we Landcare and Bruce Warburton of Landcare um, 
had developed what became known as the residual trap catch method of, um, and what this did is it gave us a index to, to measure control levels. Since then, the number of infected herds has dropped steadily, with less than 100 cases nationwide by 2010. One of the highlights of, of the whole program in this area has been the, the coordination between those three groups, you know, the, uh, like the MAF sort of oversaw the, the whole operation, and the regional council, they got into the pest control, and uh, well, the MAF did the testing too, of course, and then the farmers cooperated. You know, there was um, very good, oh, there might have been the odd niggle, but there was very good farmer buy-in. Nothing beats a, a, a common um, shared vision. I, I know it sounds all a bit simple, but I can't stress that enough. You know, there was an intrinsic goal that everybody bought into. We all knew what we were doing. Probably the biggest uh, advantage that we had by getting under the umbrella of the AHB was that when a job needed to go, it went. There was a certain degree of negotiation and, and um, working for position by some people who, who, for whatever reason, felt that they didn't like the toxins or they, they felt it wasn't needed or you know, whatever. But the thing was that in the end, that job went ahead and, and we used peer pressure. The farmers all supported each other. And if there was one person who was hanging out, there was usually a few farmers who go and knock on his door or lean on his shoulder at the pub. And so people let the, let the program go ahead and that achieved the result. So we had to get absolutely 100% coverage if we were going to solve the problem. We're seen as being at the spearhead of both the research into TB and, um, and the actual practical implementation of dealing with the problem. This is a disease that we must continue to work with to eliminate from New Zealand. At the moment we work very collaboratively between central government spending about $30 million a year with industry and with regional councils. Around 40% of New Zealand is still identified as being at high risk of bovine TB infection in its wild animal populations. Eradicating bovine tuberculosis from both livestock and wildlife carriers is the only way we can protect New Zealand's reputation for high quality meat and dairy produce and guarantee continued access to high value overseas markets. The TB Free New Zealand program, managed by the Animal Health Board, aims to eradicate TB from 2.5 million hectares by 2026, reducing the current area identified as having TB infected wild animals by a quarter.